Is it true that one of the coaches you played for when you played football at Toledo was Nick Saban? Is that a true story? That, that is a true statement. There's no doubt about it. 1990, his first year as a head football coach, he was coming from the NFL Houston Oilers. He was mm. the defensive backs coach, got the job at Toledo, and we won the MAC championship way back in 1990 in one year. So you saw firsthand his uh, ability to uh, to move men and uh, move them in the right way. Correct. There's no, we, we had we had so many guys uh, on that on that team that were either talking about quitting during the winter conditioning or they did quit. So, <laughs> <laughs> We had 16 stations in winter conditioning, and, man, they were brutal. I had, I had terrible shin splints, couldn't walk downstairs, and, but I pushed through it. I ended up being the starting linebacker. I was all-conference uh, that year, and we had a heck of a year. We ended up being MAC champions. So he put his stamp on things, in other words. He put yeah, his stamp it was great on for me to be able to see that because that, that really helped me, you know, when I was either turning a defense around or, as I'm going to do uh, now, turning the Chicago Bears around. That really helped me as a young man to be able to see – you know, and really live how he did that. That, and, was, uh, that was impressive by him. So um, are there any Saban-isms at all? You had a handful of coaches there while you were at Toledo. but um, Yeah, yeah. Wondering... Saban is, you know, one of the things I learned from him is that it's always the next play. You know, so you focus your attention on one thing and then you move to the next play and then do it that way. That's how you play a football game. And that's what he really instilled in me as a player. And so uh, you got into coaching uh, in the NFL uh, after having some time in college. Um, and was, was it Eric Mangini who gave you that first pro job in Cleveland? Is that how it happened? Yeah, exactly. So Eric Mangini was, uh, was uh, calling around and Rob Ryan was the defensive coordinator and, what they did, they, they interviewed a bunch of college defensive coordinators. Luke Fickle was one of them, and myself was another, and, and several other guys. Um, but I ended up getting the job, and that's how I got into the NFL, I think, 13 years ago now, I believe. so. But, yeah, it was Eric and, and Rob. And, and Rob was the guy who wound up uh, bringing you to Dallas as well. Is that the connection that's to the Cowboys? Correct, yeah. I followed him to Dallas, uh, and then – uh, he got let go from there, and then I end up staying on with Monty Kiffin originally, and then Rod Marinelli was the guy that took over the defense there. I think it was in 2014 in Dallas. I spent seven years with the Cowboys and the Jones family. Man, I mean, Monty Kiffin, Marinelli, Nick Saban, those are some serious names that you were uh, watching and, I, I guess, soaking up, right, Coach, that you, entire time? You learn a lot each guy and you kind of form your own philosophies as you go through that and and uh those, all those guys are really good coaches and they've all done really well at the profession and and uh to me it's it's what what forms your philosophies and what forms your strategies of how to get things done uh through just through observation and working with those guys and see how they do it and uh, that was a experience for me and of course there's really no uh prepping uh you for your first coordinator job that you get uh, through a guy who's agrees to be a head coach somewhere and then decides not, and that's how you got the gig at the Colts, correct, Coach Eberflus? That's how that happened yeah. with Josh McDaniels. Yes, that was correct. So uh, going into the Super Bowl, uh, we accepted the job uh, yeah. to go to Indianapolis, and then on Tuesday after the Super Bowl, um, uh, he decides not to take the job, and I'm sitting there with uh, Chris Ballard. And uh, so we just basically said he, he came into me right afterward. Uh, we found out that he wasn't taking the job. He says, you still got a job. You're good to go. And about 10 days later, um, might have been a little bit less than that, they hired Frank Reich, and him and I hit it off in the beginning. You know, we hit, our philosophies are in the same, you know, in the same, are lined up, and, and he's just a great, great man. I just I cannot say enough about Frank Reich um, and Chris Ballard. Those guys are just unbelievable and they were very supportive, let me do my job at Indianapolis, and I, I certainly uh, cherish that time there, and I thank those guys for that. So you take the job, you leave Dallas to take the job in Indianapolis to uh, work on the staff of somebody who then says, I'm not coming. Chris Ballard says, you're still staying, and then you 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 work with a guy on a staff with a guy you'd never met, right? You have never met Frank Reich before? No. Either way? Never, never met him. Damn. Before. I mean, how do you handle a situation like that? 
How does that happen? Well, I just need to be yourself. Yeah, you be yourself. And and Frank saw what kind of person I was and how I coached. And and he was like, man, I really like the way this looks and the way it, way it, it feels. And and we had some good defenses. We were in the top ten every every year uh, in defense at at the Colts, and and sometimes a lot higher than that. But uh, I, I thought that he liked the product on the field, and also we work well together, just man, you know, man to man. Uh, with our uh, personalities and philosophies are right in line. So it was a real easy transition uh, for us. So what would you say your philosophy is that now that we've walked everybody through your history to get to the spot where you're at? I mean, what a job to have head coach of the Chicago Bears. That is that's quite a bold, you know, bold, le- bold, bright letter a line on a resume. What, what did you tell the Bears the McCaskey family and and everybody else there, uh, Ryan Poles as well, to say to, that your philosophy is that you can let the fans know, Coach. Yeah, I, I would say this is that is that uh, look at the tape, watch the tape, and see how we we played as a defensive unit, and that's my philosophy. And what you'll see on tape is you'll see guys that play extremely hard. They're very intense. Um, they they know how to take the ball away, and obviously we're going to have to take care of the ball um, as well on offense. But we're going to play hard. We're going to be very intense. And we're going to take care of the football, take the ball away, and we're going to be smart. I'm going to I'm going to drill these guys in situations uh, to make sure they understand the critical points in the game that win football games. That'll be a you know two minute red zone into the game, uh, you know four minute all the situations, and we're going through that right now. And then really, it's more about my coaching philosophy. I believe in this. I believe in the coach and player relationship. Uh, I think that's very important to to get the best out of the player. You have to have that. And how do you do that? Well, you do it really in four different ways. You model the behavior you want to see as a coach, and then you do that with the player, and the player does it for everybody else. And in that, as you model, you inspire guys. You inspire them to act and to do right and to work extremely hard, right? And then you challenge. The next thing is that you challenge guys. You have to challenge them. And how you do that, you do it in a respectful way. So you model, you inspire, you challenge. And then at the end of the day, football is hard and, and, and it's difficult. And the last thing you've got to do is you've got to be able to encourage. You've got to be able to encourage yourself to keep going and encourage others around you. So uh, that's really my coaching philosophy. And what the product you'll see on the field is what I talked about, the hustle, you know, the intensity, and then taking care of the ball and being real smart uh, in situations. So that's what we talked about, and that's what I've done throughout my career, and that's what we're going to do here at the Bears. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.